Welcome to Animation. This is what we're going to add to our platform game now. Um, animation is a really, really deep, complex um, aspect to games dev. You can really run down the rabbit hole with it. You can take this quite, quite far. We're going to keep it relatively simple, but we're going to be basing what we've already got, our platform game that should look something like this based on the tutorial so far. So we've got our main menu, we've got our character, can't go off screen, can fall, can jump, can try and avoid enemies, and can get to the next level. All I've done is I've changed my background to a slightly more appropriate windscreen. I've also changed my loose screen as well. It's the only things that I've done so far. I have renamed my backgrounds to BG underscore windscreen and BG underscore loose screen. But now let's look at animation. First things first, we're going to replace SPR underscore player underscore running underscore R, which is a very long name, but we're going to replace that with a uh, graphic of Mario. Just as before, we're going to load a sprite from the file. It just so happens I've got my one already and prepared. This will be available on Moodle for you. I'm going to remove the background. This does come with its own drawbacks uh, because it will remove the white outline. It will also remove the white of the character's eyes. So we're taking a bit of a shortcut here, but you can appreciate you can add your own quality to it. You can spend a bit more time with it. So I'm going to pull Mario in. First thing you'll notice is this sprite of Mario is enormous. 650 by 660 um, pixels. That's almost as big as our room is. So we're going to need to make some alterations to it before we can fit it in our game. Just to show you how daft this looks, if I go to level 1, yeah, Mario is currently bigger than our level. So I'm going to go back to the sprite, uh, which is the running R. I'm going to edit the sprite. And what you should be able to see, it'll probably default to a view like this. You can see the individual frames of the animation. And if it doesn't show you the preview, you can click the show preview button here and you can move it across to see what the animation is going to look like. You do have this value down here, which is the speed. You can change this speed, but be aware this does not change your animation at all. This just changes the preview. There's a little warning here. So if you were to change your frame rate, this tells you what it would look like at frame rate of 10 frames per second or 60 frames per second or let's be a bit silly 120 frames per second okay so what we're going to do first is we're going to transform him to make him a little bit smaller so transform we're going to stretch now this seems strange because we're going to stretch it smaller but this is the tool for resizing the graphic and the canvas at the same time so transform stretch Really important that you keep the quality excellent before we do any of this. And we happen to know that it's supposed to be 64 by 64 pixels because the aspect ratio is kept on by default. If I type in 65 here, which is very close, I'm going to go with 64. It's very close to what we're looking for, 64 by 65. And that's 10% of the graphic size here. So press OK. And then press tick. OK, go back to my room. Mario looks much more reasonable in there. So let's play our game and see what Mario looks like. Play game. We've got Mario can run to the right, carries on running, and when we press left, moon walks. So first thing we're going to do is to solve it. So Mario, as he moves right and left, is going to be facing the correct direction. We're going to look at now why this is called what it's called. Obviously, you've probably clocked on by now that the R refers to facing right. So we're going to right click and duplicate that. We're not going to make a new one. We're just going to duplicate it. That creates something called Sprite 11. In my case, yours could be called be different. I'm going to right click though. Rather than type in all this out again, I'm going to right click, rename, and Control and C to get a copy of that longer name. And then when I go to my Sprite 11, I can just paste it in. I've used Control and V to paste it in. And obviously I can just change R for a capital L. I'm now facing left. Really easy to have Mario face the other direction. Edit sprite, transform just as before, and we're going to mirror slash flip. It defaults to flipping horizontally, but if your graphic perhaps you wanted to go up and down, you could flip vertically instead. So now uh, the player running left is facing left. At the minute though, Mario is still only going to move right. We've just created a new sprite. That's all we've done. So now we need to assign it, but we need to assign it at the right time. Object player, when we press right, we want to be facing right as well as moving right. To modify our sprite, which sprite is currently being displayed, we know it's to do with sprites. So that's going to be our keyword, underscore and 
index. Index is which sprite you want. Sprite underscore index. You'll notice it says assignment operator expected. That tells us it expects an equal sign. We've got to type it in. Just as before, because I've already copied it, it's already on my clipboard, I can do control V to paste it, or you can type it in if you want. SPR underscore player underscore running underscore R. You might wonder why we're we doing this. It carried all this faces right, but this will be when we go from left to right, we need to inform it to go left and right. SPR underscore player underscore running underscore R. I'm now going to do the same for when I press left, but this time I'm just going to change it for R. Hopefully you can understand why I'd put the right and left identifiers on the far right of the name, so it's really, really easy to change. And remember, we need to say sprite underscore index equals, okay? So sprite underscore equals that one. Let's see if that works. So when we press right, we expect to go right. When we go left, we expect to go left. Going right, going left. There's a few problems with this. First problem is if I let go, Mario's going to carry on running. So we're going to solve that to start with. Um, when I press left, what we're going to do here is we're going to stop the animation from playing. So to deal with this, because it's to do with the animation rather than the sprite, it's not sprite uh, keyword, it's going to be image. Image underscore index. Now before we use this, I want to explain how this works. So I'm going to click back on my sprite just to demonstrate how this works, edit sprite. You can see that each picture is named image 0, 1, all the way through to 11. I want it to become the static pose of Mario standing a bit still, which happens to be image 3. So what I can say in this bit of code I've started when I release left, image index is going to equal 3. Play the third image in that list. And I'm going to do the same for right. Image underscore index equals 3. So when I release, let's see what that does. You might have already noticed there's going to be a problem. Can you figure out what that problem is? So Mario runs, we press right, we let go of right, we press left, we let go of left. It's not working for us yet. There's a few steps we still need to do. The problem that we've got is we're not telling the animation to stop. We're telling it to go to a new image, but then it's still playing the animation. So to do this, we need to say image underscore speed. At what speed should we play this graphic? Don't. Don't play it. Set the speed to zero. I'm going to copy and paste that because it's exactly the same instruction. Let's see what that does when we play it. I'm going right. I've let go. Stopped. Pressing left. Oh no, we have a further problem. Because we've told the image to stop playing, we haven't told it to start playing again. So let's do that. When we press left, as well as changing our current position where we are on screen, and as well as changing our sprite, image underscore speed equals 1. You might think 30. 30 makes sense because that's the frame rate, but it's 1. What this 1 means is how many frames per frame do you want to put on screen? So if you do set it to 30, Mario will move very energetically, which is perhaps what we don't want. Have, have some fun with it so we can get it to do. But trust me, image speed equals 1 is what you want. And let's see what that does. So we're releasing, we're pressing, we're releasing, and that's looking pretty good now. So we have this animated GIF that we've pulled from uh, as an internet resource, and it's looking okay. There are some problems though. You'll notice that when I fall, if I'm standing still, I just kind of fall straight. And when I jump, I'm still walking. Don't worry about that. Adding finesse to animation is something that's going to take an awful long time and is quite beyond the scope of this video. The appreciation, the thing you really need to get out today, is that you can have your character move left and right, depending on which way the character needs to face and which direction they're facing, which we've done, and making the character stop. 